Solving absolute value equations and inequalities. Our objective is to solve compound inequalities, as well as write and solve absolute value equations and inequalities. Why learn this? Absolute value can be used to represent the acceptable ranges for the dimensions of baseball bats classified by their length or weight. Vocabulary to know. A disjunction is a compound statement that uses the word or. And a conjunction is a compound statement that uses the word and. With a disjunction, you might also find a symbol like this being used when you're dealing with interval notation. All right, so let's start by solving some compound inequalities. To solve, you're going to solve the same way you would any inequality, only now you just have two of them to look at. So let's start with the one on the left. So we're going to subtract 3 from both sides, leaving us with x is less than or equal to negative 1. And now we're going to solve for the right. So divide both sides by 3, leaving you with x is greater than 3. Now if we want to graph the solution set, that's the part that you should be all familiar with. So we have a filled in circle on negative 1 and the x values are less. Or you can have an open circle here and it's shaded to the right. You do need both pieces because it is a compound inequality. And then if we were to write this in interval notation, this is when it gets a little bit trickier. So it's going off into negative infinity, and you can never include an infinity. So that's going to be a parenthesis. And because we're including the negative 1, we have a brace. Or, so there's your disjunction. And then you have the not included value of 3 going off into infinity, which is also not included. So let's try this next one. This next one is an and statement. So similar to the last, we're going to solve for x in both pieces. So we're going to divide both sides by negative 2, leaving us with x is greater than negative 4, because we divided by a negative. And then we have our plus 3 on both sides, leaving us with x is less than or equal to 5. So now we can graph. So if x has to be greater than negative 4, and less than 5, our data is going to be smushed in the middle. And then, if you write it this way, it might be easier to notice. So we have x has to be less than or equal to 5, but greater than negative 4. So if you were to write this in interval notation, you're going to have a parenthesis with your negative 4, and a brace with your 5. Try this next one on your own. It's a little bit trickier, but see if you can figure it out. Now that you've had a chance to try this one, let's try it together. So we're going to subtract 3 from both sides, leaving us with x has to be greater than 4. And then our other one, we're going to divide both sides by 3, leaving us with x is greater than or equal to 6. Well, if we look, Every point that satisfies our x is greater than or equal to 6 is also going to satisfy this x is greater than 4. So therefore, to use this, you want to make sure you're using your x is greater than 4, because it's the most basic. So if we wanted to write this in set builder notation, for example, you would have x such that x is greater than 4. Because if x is greater than 4, it's automatically going to fit. This x has to be greater than or equal to 6. And then you can graph it. Alright, so absolute value. The absolute value of a real number x, as seen here, so two lines with the x in between, is equal to the distance from 0 on a number line. So when you're doing distance, it's always positive. So whether it was a positive 5 or a negative 5, if you're taking the absolute value of those, your result in the end is going to be a positive 5. So when solving, you don't necessarily know whether it started as a negative 5 or a positive 5. So therefore, you need to solve for both. So when you're dealing with absolute value, you're going to have two answers.
So if you look here, if you have the absolute value of x equals 3, it's 3 from 0. So therefore, negative 3 and positive 3, and they're both filled in circles. If you have the absolute value is less than 3, and if you were to solve, it would end up being a conjunction stating that your x value has to be between negative 3 and 3. If it was greater than 3, that becomes a disjunction, so there's an or. It's either going to end up being less than 3, negative 3, or more than positive 3. So let's look at it as a table. For all real numbers x and all positive real numbers a. So if the absolute value of x equals a, x is either going to be negative a or positive a. If the absolute value of x is less than a, you're going to have x is greater than negative a and x is less than a. And then if the absolute value of x is greater than a, x is going to be less than negative a or x is going to be greater than a. Let's try practicing some, some solving of the absolute value equations. So notice how here we have our absolute value by itself. You want to do that first. So if that's already there, you can just go from there. So now we can have x minus 7 equals 5, or you're going to have x minus 7 equals negative 5, because you're not sure which one it's going to necessarily be. It could be either one. So now we solve. So if we add 7 to both sides here, we end up with x equaling 12. And then if we add 7 to both sides on this one, we end up with the fact that x equals 2. So for b, notice how the absolute value is not by itself. You need to do that first before you start splitting things up. So step one, you get the absolute value on its own. So if we subtract 5 from both sides, we're left with the absolute value of 3x is equal to 9. So now we can do 3x is equal to 9, or 3x is equal to negative 9. And then solve. So if we divide by 3, we end up with x equals 3, or x equals negative 3. Okay, so solving an absolute value inequality. Step 1, isolate the absolute value expression if necessary. Notice how in A we didn't have to, it was already by itself, but in B we had to. Step 2, rewrite the absolute value expression as a compound inequality. And then third, solve each part of the compound inequality for x. So let's practice. All right, so since this is the absolute value is greater than your number, it's a disjunction or it's an or statement. All right, so we have 2x plus 1 is greater than 5, or we have 2x plus 1 is less than negative 5. Notice how we flip the sign. So we keep it the same here, and then as soon as we change it to the negative, we have to flip the sign. Because what happens when you're de dealing with a negative, if you were dividing or multiplying by a negative, you end up flipping the sign. Well, that same idea applies here. So now we can simply solve. So if we subtract 1 from both sides, we end up with 2x is greater than 4. Divide by 2, we have x is greater than 2. Or, if we subtract 1 from both sides, we have 2x is less than negative 6. And if we divide by 2, we end up with x is less than negative 3. So then we can graph. And when we see our graph, we have an open circle on 
negative 3 and our x values are less, an open, or an open circle on 2 and our x values are more. And then if we were to write this, we would have it going for, to and from negative infinity to negative 3 and neither values are included, or, so we're just disjunction here, we have 2 and it goes off into positive infinity. So let's try this next one. Alright, so this one here, we want to make sure that we get the absolute value by itself first. So we're going to subtract 16 from both sides. So now we're left with the absolute value of 4x is greater than negative 8. So now we can set it up. So we have 4x is greater than negative 8, or 4x is less than positive 8. And then we can divide both sides by 4, leaving us with x is greater than negative 2, or x is less than 2. And when we graph, notice how x has to be greater than negative 2 and less than 2. And it's an OR statement, so therefore it's going to end up being all real numbers. If it was an AND statement, it would be just the ones between. Let's try a conjunction. So we want to get our absolute value by itself before we do anything. So we're going to multiply both sides by 2, leaving us with 3x minus 9, underneath our, or inside our absolute value symbols, is less than or equal to 24. So now we can separate. So we have 3x minus 9 is less than or equal to 24. And then we have 3x minus 9 is greater than or equal to negative 24. So don't forget, as soon as we change over to the negative one, we flip the inequality. And then we solve. So we're going to add 9 to both sides. And when we do so, we're left with 3x is less than or equal to 33, and 3x is greater than or equal to negative 15. And then we can divide by 3, leaving us with x is less than or equal to 11, and x is greater than or equal to negative 5. And since it's an OR statement, we know we're going to be between, so therefore, we're going to shade between negative 5 and 11. And this would be your set builder notation. Let's try this next one. Okay, so we're going to divide both sides by negative 4, because we want to get the absolute value by itself. So we have x plus 3 is greater than or equal to, oops, flip your sign, we're dividing by a negative, so we need to flip our sign, so we have negative 2, and now we can set it up, so we have x plus 3 is less than or equal to negative 2, and x plus 3 is greater than or equal to positive 2. So now we can subtract 3 from both sides. And that leaves us with x is less than or equal to negative 5, and x is greater than or equal to negative 1. And, well, no real numbers are going to satisfy this. So if x has to be less than or equal to negative 5 and, because it's a conjunction, so and x has to be greater than or equal to negative 1, it's not going to work. The solution set is empty. And that ends our lesson on solving absolute value equations and inequalities.